update on the case we've been closely following for almost a decade now. Three former jail guards who were convicted of murdering a mentally ill inmate in 2015 are expected to walk free after pleading to lesser charges. The death of Michael Tyree opened the floodgates for seismic reforms, not only at the main jail in Santa Clara County, but at the sheriff's department as a whole. On August 26, 2015, 31-year-old Michael Tyree was waiting for a bed to open up at a mental health facility, but was being held at the jail in San Jose on outstanding warrants and misdemeanor offenses. According to prosecutors, three guards armed with batons entered Tyree's cell, and at least one of them beat him to death. The DA's office says Tyree lost half of his blood volume, his liver was severely lacerated, and his spleen was almost torn in half. The three guards were charged with murder. Then in 2017, the three of them were convicted and sentenced to 15 years to life in prison. Five years later, a new state law passed saying for a murder conviction to stand, the accused has to be considered the actual killer of a person. Because that couldn't be done, the convictions were reversed. So that takes us to today in court, where our Kelsey Thord shows us how this case finally concluded. Seven years after their initial conviction, two years after that conviction was overturned, and just as the DA's office was planning to retry their case, the three former Santa Clara County jail guards charged with the 2015 killing of inmate Michael Tyree have admitted to the crime and pleaded guilty. Today was a victory for the vulnerable and the voiceless. 36-year-old Matthew Ferris, 37-year-old Jairi Lubrin, and 40-year-old Rafael Rodriguez all pleaded guilty to voluntary manslaughter Tuesday. For the first time, saying aloud in court, they beat 31-year-old Tyree to death. Did you personally assault or aid and abet the assault of Michael Tyree on August 26, 2015, causing his death? Yes. Santa Clara County District Attorney Jeff Rosen said it was important for his office and Tyree's family to get that verbal admission. Because if they're accepting responsibility for what they did, then we wanted them to accept responsibility, which to us does not mean saying no contest or uh, just pleading guilty and then coming out here and saying, oh, well, I pled guilty, uh, but I didn't really do it. I just wanted to take this particular deal. As part of their plea deal, all three men accepted the maximum prison sentence for the charge. Your sentence in this case will be 11 years in state prison, followed by up to three years of parole supervision. Do you understand that? Yes, Your Honor. That 11-year sentence, however, includes time served, leaving the three men with what's expected to be less than a year left to go. Ever since their initial conviction was overturned, the men have been out from behind bars and on house arrest. D.A. Rosen says the likelihood they'll go back to prison to serve out the remainder of their time is low. If they abide by the judge's orders, I'm sure the judge will allow them to serve the rest of their sentence on electronic monitoring. Still, the D.A. believes some justice has been served in getting the three to admit their guilt and serve the maximum sentence allowed by the law. But he also knows none of that will bring Tyree back to his family. And so I have enormous sadness about that and just enormous uh, empathy for his family. All three men are expected back in court in October for formal sentencing. So in 2017, Santa Clara County agreed to pay out $3.6 million to settle an excessive force claim filed by Tyree's family. After his death, former Sheriff Lori Smith convened a blue ribbon commission to do a top-down review of the county's jails. But the panel ended up turning on her, urging the Board of Supervisors to seize control of the jail from Sheriff Smith. Judge Ladoris Cordell, who served on that panel, told us this in 2016. Right now, the sheriff has been running the jails, and uh, we have found as a commission that there were problems festering in that jail for years and years and years, and nothing was done, nothing was done until the death of Michael Tyree. 
The panel made over 100 recommendations to improve conditions for inmates, and as we reported in 2016, the death of Tyree exposed gaps in the main jail's old surveillance system, something that prompted Sheriff Smith to take matters into her own hands. Those minutes, those last minutes of his life were absolutely horrible. The prosecutor showed surveillance video taken on the night of the killing showing the three deputies entering the area of Tyree's cell. But the video doesn't show what happened in the cell itself. New security cameras caught this huge inmate fight in the maximum security section of the jail. It happened one day after the sheriff caused a stir for taking matters into her own hands. She went to Costco and bought the cameras, charging them to her personal credit card after she learned it would take two more years and $20 million before any more cameras made it inside the jail. The Sheriff's Department ended up installing almost 300 cameras in that jail that year, but Sheriff Smith couldn't escape the growing fallout from Michael Tyree's death and the problems exposed in the entire jail system that led to major changes. In the end, she resigned from office in 2022 after being found guilty of six counts of misconduct and corruption.